This is the distribution of pain that Lily was describing. And that's the rear view. And you can see here the entry side of the bullet, the wound, scar. You can see some sh shrapnel on the plain x-ray. A bleak view shows fairly wide distribution of the shrapnel in the soft tissues of the back. And this shows some shrapnel and the bullet lodged in the paraspinal soft tissue. We had to be certain that um, there were no uh, metal fragments within the spinal canal and that it uh, could have caused damage to the spinal cord during the MRI, which is mandatory prior to um, spinal cord neurostimulation. And this map <coughs> outlines the uh, vertebral level that we wanted to target with our spinal cord neurostimulation. Um, because if we wanted to target uh, pain distribution, say covering the T12 dermatome, we, want, we would then require a neurostimulator uh, position in the mid-thoracic region. This is the uh, positioning for our pure spinal cord neurostimulation trial. This was the positioning of leads for our peripheral nerve field neurostimulation trial with a staggered uh, a parallel orientation. Our final um, optimal configuration was a hybrid spinal cord neurostimulation combined with peripheral neurostimulation leads as well. This is Lily and um, Lily's been a patient of mine for a, a couple of years, uh, about a year. Um, first met her late last year and um, Lily has an interesting history of chronic pain. Um, we're doing a consultation today using Skype. Um, so Lily, can you just give us a little bit of a background as to how you develop your chronic pain? Uh, so four years ago, I was uh, shot through the chest, um, so through my lower two ribs, uh, and the bullet went through um, and lodged into my back, um, and the bullet sort of got moved around. I was um, beaten up a fair bit when I got shot, and mm. uh, it sort of pushed the, the bullet sort of around my back a bit, and... Uh, it stayed there for eight weeks until I was able to have it removed. Um, and then after that, it was just, uh, yeah, pain from there. So, so Lily was um, looking at Lily's x-rays, which I'll show you later. Um, she had little uh, metal fragments or shrapnel in the subcutaneous tissue <clears throat> around the uh, thoracolumbar spine. And um, uh, there was no shrapnel injury to the spinal cord itself but as a result of that injury you know, she had a lot of pain in the left uh, flank and subcostal and uh, costal region of her back extending right down to sort of at least to the level of the belt line would you say? Uh, it went from about my ribs almost down to my left knee mm. so even All the way, sort of down to there. Yeah. When it when my pain would get really bad, mm. it'd get down to there, but generally, sort of down into top of top of my thigh, sort of mm. area. And how would you describe the nature of that pain? Would, would you <laughs> like a constant ache uh, or a burning? It was or? the way I've described it to everyone is it's like having a red hot poker jammed into me that has been wrapped in barbed wire that's been electrified. Yeah, so obviously not a not a very pleasant sensation to, no. to put up with twenty four seven, and and that really affected your life, didn't it, Lily? You, yeah, you you had to stop training and and working. And so I used to, yeah, I used to be a personal trainer, and I've had to give that up, and uh, I haven't been able to run. Um, just walk 
walking, uh, I have to rest for a long time, sitting, I can't sit for long periods, I can't stand for long periods, so it's really, mm. really affected things. I got down to, uh, I got back to work and was doing eight hours a week and my body just couldn't cope, mm. so... And you were taking quite um, significant opioid analgesia, painkillers, yes. every day, regularly. Yes. Yep. And you tried many therapies, lots of physical therapies, you name it. I've, you name it, I've done it. I've tried everything and I've tried a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I met Lily, um, we had a bit of a challenge because of the fairly unusual distribution of her pain, but I was happy that it was a neuropathic uh, type of pain and, and given the injury we, um, we attempted some peripheral nerve field uh, neurostimulation uh, trials and, and some of those gave us suboptimal uh, results but then we proceeded to spinal cord neurostimulation combined with um, uh, a hybrid approach with some peripheral, neuro peripheral field neurostimulation uh, that work that we were able to um, elicit from the original trials. So we had a half and half approach with some stimulation on the spinal cord and some stimulation peripherally. And um, tell us how you found the um, surgical procedure. You said there was a there was a bit of surgical pain as a result of um, getting the implant inserted. Yep. Uh, it did take me a little bit longer than I expected with the surgical pain to sort of subside. Um, but now that that's sort of gone away, I've only got a little bit sort of around where the actual pack is. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of took a bit of time, but after that, it's been, yeah. it's been okay. And we do find that patients who have chronic pain, um, that, that even simple surgery and simple incisions on the skin can... Um, can take longer to settle down uh, as opposed to doing an operation on someone who doesn't have chronic pain, they're, they're in a, a sort of hypersensitive state in their, neuro, their nervous system. So that's not uncommon, unfortunately, but um, it, it eventually settles down. And, and um, how would you describe the sensation, um, the sensations now when you've got the stimulation turned on? Uh. So for the actual, so when it's on, uh, my pain is certainly lessened. Um, the actual device, it feels almost like pins and needles, but mm -hmm. it's that feeling of just before you get pins and needles. So it's not uncomfortable, but it's certainly, it's a, a different sensation to having that pain come. It, the pain is still there, but it's just not as... Um, Intense. Not as strong, I suppose, or not as noticeable. It's not as intense and yeah. um, and a slightly different nature as opposed to barbed wire. You're sort of describing it as a light tingle. I think once you use the term like champagne bubbles. Yes, um, yes. Uh, under the um, skin. And I have to say, because uh, no, it used to be I couldn't even touch the skin on my left side and I'm actually now able to touch my stomach and mm -hmm. I haven't been able to do that in four years. So brilliant, brilliant. It's, um, it's certainly changed, uh, changed the sensation in my skin. That's wonderful. And, and uh, your, um, your pain medication has been able to uh, be reduced down to Norspan 5 microgram patch. Yes. And, and hopefully that's going to continue to come down as your, as your nervous system um, uh, changes physiologically to be less, uh, to be less sensitive. Um, and also thinking about going back to university and completing your degree. Yes. And, and getting your life back, uh, getting your life back um, on track. Yep, definitely feel a lot more confident about doing things. I was just too hard before, whereas now I feel like, yep, I can go and, can go and do it. Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks, Lily. And um, you'd obviously uh, recommend this type of therapy um, to, to other patients suffering from chronic neuropathic pain? Yes, definitely. It's, it absolutely has changed my life already, and I couldn't be happier, could not be happier.